we've, we've been here for, uh, on this place right here, I'd say we've been here probably, uh, let's see, be about five generations. Yeah. So 150 years, something like that. That's counting the grandkids. They'd be fifth generation. They live on the farm. He'd go from back to 17, 1800s. I was born here on this farm, born right here where we're sitting, and uh, yeah, I was right here on this property right here, and I've lived here all my life. I've been cover cropping over 50 years myself. I guess the first time I covered crop was probably, I was in high school, and it was in 19, probably 67, 68, somewhere in that area. In 74, I bought a no-till planter myself, and I actually still got the same planter, still use it today. I mean, it's been over probably better than 10,000 acres. The generations right before me, they, they took care of it the best they knew how. But see, as generations come on, technology's changed. And, and I have stepped up now to two or three different technologies that wasn't available when they was found here with mules and horses. I like the crimper, which I hadn't used it till this year. I had used just a plain color packer roller before. The crimper even does better because it breaks it in sections, in little pieces, gets it to the ground, and then the earthworms can come up and eat that and work it and turn it into manure, which your crops can uh, eat. You gotta feed your crops. You know, the day is prices on fuel, you know, safe trips across the field. But, you know, it also keeps the ground from washing away. You don't, you don't have any ditches in your field. You don't lose your topsoil. There's a lot of pressure from hundreds of tons of water being thrown down on the ground all at once in, in a heavy rainstorm. In our county here, most fields are highly erodible. They're subject to wash. Cover cropping all the time, you're, you're gaining you're gaining topsoil from the compost that this puts back every year. <laughs> Anytime you can gain soil, you know, instead of losing soil, uh, you're on the plus side. That's pretty basic right there. When you work the fields and, and all this dirt that uh, washes into the, the streams, the aquatics, the fish, and the, it's all these different animals that live in there, the little minnows and the, the breeding fish that come up and lay eggs and all that stuff, uh, they can breathe clean water a whole lot better than I feel like then they could uh, muddy water. I, I feel like that, you know, that uh, to me, you know, it, it's sort of, I guess, I could compare it to an old stale salad or a good fresh salad. I'll take the fresh salad, okay? That's the way I think about the, the, the water system, you know. The, the, the cleaner, the prettier the water, the better I feel like uh, the, the animals and the mussels and everything that lives in there is going to do birds fly over you know you, you don't stop the birds from flying you, you can't stop the coyotes or whatever bears from coming through the property or anything like that so they're they're God's creation whatever you do here uh, directly has input on them too you know I mean you know if it's for the good or for the bad what you do on, on your property you know they're, they're tied together uh, if you want them to be or not we own on both sides of the river, so it's, uh, you know, I'd say it's a, good, it's a good thing if more people was doing no-till and more people was doing cover crops, then the river probably pretty much run clear all the time. It's America, and you make your choice, you know, what you do. So, I mean, it's, it's worked for me. If this didn't work, I would not be doing it. If it wasn't profitable to me and my operation, uh, we wouldn't be sitting here talking. That's the bottom line. Cover crops, it's more work, but uh, it, it's well worth it if a person uh, would take the time to do it. It, it saves your bottom line. It, it might, might save you farming.